Welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm your host, Eitan Berger. Born in France to an ultra-Orthodox family, photographer Ezra Landau's work is a unique documentation of events and stolen moments in time. Landau captures everyday people and turns them into works of art that speak and tell of the power and emotion of the human spirit. Ezra Lander is a very curious person. I try to find good in the world. I try to find him in little moments, in every day, in every place, in every people. And I try to do this with pictures. I try to find special moments in uh, between peoples. I do my first photographies when I was uh, six years old and I take pictures. Uh, I go in the street and I bring out my camera and in Second, I take, I, I see a special moment, and in the second that I see them, it's in the camera, and I feel great. I feel that I capture a piece of God in my camera. When I see the moment, before I take the picture, I know that is is the picture and I have a title and caption for the picture. I see a child, I see a person with a special face, special emotion. In one second, I, I get that it's, it's special, it's natural. And when I see a person, I can see his soul and his face. And I try to take, and to take in the, the soul is soul in my camera. I can find shots everywhere. I believe that when I take pictures, I find, I find God in the picture. And since he's everywhere, God is everywhere, I can find pictures everywhere. Kisharon Shelly, הוא כולו מבורא עולם, כולו בא מאלוקים. ופשוט אני לקחתי את הכישרון הזה, ואני כבר הרבה מאוד שנים מפתח אותו, ומנסה למצוא בכל רגע את התמונה, בעצם את בורא עולם, בכל סיטואציה, בכל נקודה, וזה לא משנה איפה אני אצלם. ברגע שאני מבין ואני מפנים שהוא נמצא בכל מקום, אז אני אוכל למצוא ולהוציא תמונה מנצחת, תמונה מרגשת, תמונה עוצמתית, בכל מקום, כי מצאתי שם את בורא עולם. במשך הרבה שנים הסתקרנתי מאוד בחברה החרדית בירושלים, ואני תיעדתי אותה הרבה. אבל כמובן שזו לא ההתעניינות היחידה שלי, אני הלכתי לכל מקום, הייתי בכל מיני מקומות בעולם. ואני תיעדתי בכל מקום שהייתי, ובכל מקום שהייתי בו, אני ניסיתי למצוא באמת את הדברים המעניינים, את הדברים המרגשים. ובזמן האחרון, בשנים האחרונות, אני התחלתי באמת לחבר בין שני העולמות ביחד, ולנסות לקחת את כל החתיכות האלה, ולעשות מזה יחידה אחת שמחברת. את כל החברות, את כל המגזרים, את כל הדברים שיש, לא רק אצל היהודים, בכל מקום בעולם.
From the narrow streets of the ultra-Orthodox neighborhood Mea Sha'arim to IDF positions in the Gaza perimeter, the camera of Ezra Landau captures small moments that say so much about the individuals and the Jewish nation as a whole. Through his photographs, we can perceive eternal questions about the place of the individual within the community, about relationships, and about communication. In each of his photographs, Ezra Landau challenges us to open our eyes and in so doing, open our hearts. When I came to the city for 25 years, הייתי מאוד מסוקרן בציבור החרדי, שהוא היה, שהזכיר לי את מה שהיה, מה שקראתי, מה שראיתי בספרים על העולם החרדי לפני השואה, וניסיתי לשחזר ולצלם אותו איך שהוא נראה. ובמשך השנים אני צילמתי אותו, אבל אני התמקדתי לא רק בציבור החרדי, אני הלכתי לכל מיני מקומות, גם בארץ וגם בעולם. ותיעדתי את כל המגזרים, את כל החברות. ובשנים האחרונות אני באמת עשיתי חיבור בין שני העולמות האלה, ואני מנסה לייצר תמונות שרואים בהן את החיבור בין כל החברות וכל המגזרים. כשהייתי ילד, היה לנו בבית את הספר של רומן וינשניאק, שצילם תמונות מלפני השואה. ותיעד שם את היהדות בפולין, בשחור לבן. והושפעתי מאוד מהספר הזה. ובעצם התמונות הראשונות שראיתי, תמונות אומנותיות, זה תמונות שראיתי בשחור לבן. וזה מאוד השפיע עליי. כשהייתי יותר גדול, אימא שלי הוציאה עיתון במשך שנים, והיא גם הייתה, היא גם אומנית, והיא גם הייתה מציירת, והייתה מפרסמת תמונות בשחור לבן. ואני זוכר את עצמי שתמיד אני הייתי מתקומם ואומר, למה ללכת בשחור לבן כל הזמן? ועם הזמן זה נכנס פנימה, ובמשך השנים התחלתי כן לצלם בשחור לבן ולהרגיש את העוצמה שיש בשחור לבן. כשאנחנו מתעמקים בקבלה היהודית, אנחנו רואים בעצם שיש שני כוחות, שזה השחור והלבן. כשיהודים כותבים ספר תורה, אז הם כותבים אותו אותיות שחורות. על גבי קלף שהוא לבן, לא צריך צבעים, השחור והלבן מספיקים, זה שני הניגודים שמצליחים להעביר את כל המסרים שבעולם. לכן יש עוצמה מאוד גדולה בשחור לבן, בלי שיצטרכו שום גוון אחר. מעלה שיש בשחור לבן, שאפשר להעביר רגשות הרבה יותר... בצורה פשוטה. לפעמים הצבעים מבלבלים את האדם שיראה את התמונה. מצד שני, ברגע שמצלמים בצבע, אז בוודאי שאפשר להעביר הרבה מאוד רגשות נוספים, הרבה דברים שהיו חסרים בשחור לבן, שהצבע הוסיף לנו, ובוודאי שיש בזה מעלה יתרה, אבל השחור לבן משאיר אה, מסר מאוד מאוד מיוחד. When I take pictures, I talk about myself. I, I take pictures of my emotions. I want the people uh, see my pictures, find uh, themselves soul, themselves emotions in my pictures. Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard once said that boredom is the root of all evil, the despairing refusal to be oneself. Today, Rabbi Jacobson chats to us about the evils of boredom and how to overcome them. One of the great challenges in life is boredom. People get bored. They get bored by their routines, by their patterns, by the daily grind. 
And uh, when a person is bored, a lot of trouble can happen. I once was speaking to a group of the teens at risk. These were young men and women who had gotten into trouble with drug and alcohol. And they were now in the rebound, making, fixing up their lives. And they, one of them was friendly to me and asked me to come and speak for them. So I all, all asked them all, how did you all get into trouble? There's no person on earth that wants to be addicted to anything. Their answers were very uh, varied. Uh, one person said I was uh, coming off my family a very, very bad and ugly divorce. Another guy said I had bad friends. Another person had a death in the family. But still, what was like, these, you know, many people sometimes suffer and they come out intact and others get destroyed. So as we dug deeper, I think one of the people said, it's boredom, I was bored. I was looking for some high, something to do. And we all identified that boredom can be the root of many problems. It itself doesn't look so bad. You know, okay, so you're bored. But it creates what's called a vacuum. And nature abhors a vacuum, and when there's a vacuum, anything can happen. So suddenly you can get yourself into deep trouble simply because you were bored. So what is the antidote to boredom? How do you create healthy excitement in your life? Healthy vitality? So there's this powerful story that always has very much touched me. This is the story in the time of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was the founder of the Hasidic movement. There are many beautiful stories and Torahs and thoughts and ideas, insights that he offers us. So this happened with a man called Reb Chaim Rappaport was one of his uh, disciples and colleagues. And the Baal Shem Tov once sent him on a mission to a particular location. Once he finished the job, he came back, reported to the Baal Shem Tov, and the Baal Shem Tov asked him, so how did you travel? Which seemed to be almost like an incidental, non-significant issue of how he traveled. So he told him, I went through this town, that town. No, I want to know the details, the Baal Shem Tov said. How did you get there? So he, so he began to spell it out. He said, well, the first night I traveled this road, I stayed in an inn. The next day I continued my journey. The next night there was no inn, so I slept at the side of a road. I camped out there. And then in the morning I woke up, I said my prayers, I washed my hands, said my prayers. And then I sat down to have a little breakfast. And uh, I went to get a cup of water to drink. Where'd you get the water from, the Baal Shem Tov said. He said there was a spring of water a few, a, a little while, uh, right, right over the road. I went over, I took the water, and the Baal Shem Tov jumped up, all excited, and said, that brook or spring of water was waiting from the beginning of time for you to come and make a blessing and drink that water. That was the lesson. Why, why is it so amazing? Because it means that the true power in life is not looking for some type of miracle, some novelty. It's about seeing the extraordinary within the ordinary. When you recognize that every encounter, in this case, the cup of water you're drinking is not just another act, that it's filled with significance and meaning, that the, if the all of time, from the beginning of time, all of existence was waiting for you to come there and make that blessing and consume the water, it take, makes everything in life not boring. Everything in life takes on a whole different meaning. It means, as King David writes in the book of Psalms, God leads the footsteps of a person. So wherever we go, we may think we're going for one reason, for business, for vacation. And truth is, there's always a deeper message, a deeper story that's supposed to happen there. That's why it's very important always to be spontaneous and always have an element of, 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 um, uh, of, not, of free abandon and not having everything all planned out. It's good to have a plan, you get to a location, but always keep your eyes open for that which is spontaneous, for the unexpected, because very often that's the real reason that you're there. So then life takes on a whole different meaning. It means wherever we go, whoever we meet, is an opportunity type of spiritual opportunity. The Kabbalists like to put it in this way. They say it's spiritual sparks. Each of us has allocated a amount, certain amount of spiritual sparks in our lives, and we have to gather those sparks and discover them and free them, redeem them. You think of it like this. Let's say someone wrote a, uh, a beautiful book, and then they tore the pages up, and they scattered the pages all over. And it's our job is to come and gather those pages, gather those words, and rebuild and reconstruct the story. This is, in a way, some of the Kabbalists explain the purpose and the concept of life. That each of us is given these scattered different elements in our lives that can be anywhere. It can be where we live, where we travel, the people we know, the personalities we have, the opportunities that come our way. And so our job is to discover the deeper meaning behind it all and elevate it to some greater cause, to a higher cause. 
So that, when a person has that type of attitude, they don't necessarily need a high all the time. Everything they're doing is a high. They're able to look at every experience as being one that's exciting because it's about freeing a spark that's there right there before you. That's why the same Baal Shem Tov also says that the difference between nature and a miracle is only one small thing, frequency. If the sun were to rise once in our lifetime, everyone would say, wow, look at this unbelievable event. And we'd come with, with the camera crews and our children. But since the sun rises every morning, ah, it becomes a routine. Big thing, it's gonna to happen tomorrow again. The miracle is understanding that nature is basically miracles all the time. They're just miracles happening so often that we don't even notice them. It's about opening your eyes and seeing that the miracle's right there in front of you right now. It's seeing the extraordinary within the ordinary. I remember once speaking to a guy, a pediatrician that came to one of my classes. And after the class, some of us hung out and we were having a conversation about our jobs and our careers. Anyway, he, someone asked him, why did you choose to become a pediatrician? And he said something really beautiful. He said that he worked in New York Hospital, he delivers children on the eighth floor, which is the maternity ward. And um, often he thinks to himself, because it's right in New York City, it's right over the FDR Drive, which is a very serious, busy highway. with a lot of noise. And he says sometimes he's delivering a child that's in the middle of the rush hour. The rush hour, people are rushing, you hear the cars, the, 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 the horns honking, the brakes screeching, you can sense people's nerves um, fraying. And people are rushing. Where are they rushing to, he thinks? Some are rushing home, some are rushing to a meeting, some are rushing to dinner, and some are rushing just to rush. And he says, in contrast, here I am about to deliver a baby. The miracle of all life, the beginning that we all endure. And here there's no rush hour, there's no bumper to bumper traffic. You have a, the doctor, a nurse, the mother, a husband, family member maybe. And the greatest miracle is happening and nobody's even noticing. And it brings them to tears to realize that we live in a world where we're so distracted by temporary things, by things that don't last, and we don't even see the miracles that are happening right around us. So that's an attitude to life that each of us can employ, very different than what we usually, we get trapped and become victims of circumstances. My job, my work, my home, this demand, that demand, parents, children, family, and we all go to therapy for our neurosis as a result, etc. When in truth, your answers are there right before you, that everything that comes your way in life is an opportunity, not a challenge, an opportunity for you to be able to redeem and see the extraordinary, the miracle that's within it. Sometimes it takes more work to look for it, but it's an attitude that if you really employ this attitude can change the way you look at things, your perspective and your attitude to everything that comes your way, both that are revealed good and even sometimes those challenging moments, which so often can help us become stronger and greater people. Eliezer Auerbach's song, Ilanga La Fischer, is a fusion of different cultures and thus has a worldwide appeal. The lyrics are taken from Pirkei Avot, or Ethics of Our Fathers, and translated into Zulu. Much of the attraction of the song is that Rabbi Eliezer Auerbach collaborated with some of the best African singers from the Witz University Choir, who connected to the message and the values taken from Jewish sources and helped transfer these into song to a broad audience.
ilangalithisha no msebenzi mningi Masebenzi baya vilapa Holo labo lili mingi Umpatu ya bakuku zela Ilangalithisha no msebenzi mningi Masebenzi baya vilapa Holo labo lili mingi Umpatu ya bakuku zela In our portion from Pirkei Avot today, we look at chapter 3, Mishnah 4. Rav Hanina, the son of Haninai, would say, One who stays awake at night or travels alone on the road and turns his heart to idleness endangers his life. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for for this week's episode of Simcha. Thank you so much for joining us. We love to hear from you, so please find us on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions and drop us a line. From myself, Eitan Berger, and the whole team here at Simcha, have a great week and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>